Finally, Sonos has a subwoofer that's more affordable and practical for smaller spaces, the Sub Mini. It only took 10 years to get here. Sonos's original wireless sub, which debuted back in 2012, has always been targeted at their most hardcore users. With a launch price of $699, it was just as expensive as Sonos's flagship Play Bar, which also came out way back then, and it was also huge. It just never really made sense in an apartment or a smaller room. It's also worth noting that subwoofer is now $50 more expensive thanks to Sonos's recent price hikes. Basically, that left casual Sonos fans just out of luck if they wanted any sort of low-end support. And that became even more apparent over the last few years as the company started releasing more affordable soundbars like the Ray and the Beam. You probably wouldn't want to pair a $699 subwoofer with a soundbar that costs $400 or less, right? Simply put, the $429 Sub Mini fills a huge gap in Sonos's lineup. But is it actually any good? Now, if I could, I'd show you my cat's shocked reaction as I played Baby Driver's opening car chase on the Sonos Arc in my family room. Sonos may not be the most price conscious company around, but boy, do they make good speakers. And the Sub Mini is another one of those. Now I know if you own an Arc, you'd probably be pairing that with the beefier Sonos Sub, but I was still impressed by how much the Sub Mini helped, especially since you know the Arc on its own has a pretty good amount of low end as well. Muffled shotgun firing at the beginning of Baby Driver shook my walls and genuinely made my cat jump into the air. Throughout that opening chase, I could viscerally feel the rumble of engines. I could feel, you know, the impact of every single car crash and you feel it. And honestly, it just feels and sounds great. The Sub Mini transformed the movie from something I was just watching to something I was genuinely experiencing. And for me, that is sort of what I'd want from any decent home theater experience. I was genuinely surprised by how big the Sub Mini felt because it's still a pretty small cylinder. It weighs 14 pounds, 22 pounds lighter than the big Sonos Sub, and it features dual six inch woofers that face inward. Its sealed design means it doesn't really push out a ton of air like ported subs, but that also ensures a much tighter bass response. The Sub Mini can reach down to 25 Hertz, which is more than enough to make the opening of Blade Runner 2049 hit me right in the gut. While I wouldn't call it portable, I did appreciate how easy it was to move the sub around my home to different rooms. It's certainly a lot more fun than doing that with the bigger sub, uh, which I tried back in the day. That was not fun, that's a huge speaker. You can pair the Sub Mini with Sonos's powered speakers like the Play 5, Beam, and Ray, but unfortunately it doesn't work with any of the company's battery powered speakers. Now I get it, that makes sense for the tiny Rome. Nobody is gonna wanna put a subwoofer on that thing. But I own a Sonos Move and I really like that speaker. It delivers a great amount of sound, you know, in a small room, but I could pick it up and take it to the backyard and just have a great time playing music outside. I really wish the Sub Mini had some way to pair with the Move. You know, when it's sitting in its charging base, it's effectively a wired speaker. So I really hope Sonos figures out a way to make that work eventually. Despite that annoyance, the Sub Mini seems well suited to homes that have a bunch of Sonos speakers. It took me about 30 seconds to move it over to the Play 5 in my living room, and it really added a lot of depth to tracks I test a lot on every speaker and headphones I come across. Tan Dun's Night Fight track from the Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon soundtrack generally sounded like I was hosting a drumming concert in my living room. It was that loud and impactful. I played a bunch of Flying Lotus as well, and it was so loud and, you know, impactful, it sent one of my cats cowering out of the room. As great as it is for music though, I think most people would end up pairing the Sub Mini with one of Sonos's sound bars. When I moved it over to the beam that's sitting in my bedroom, uh, it made that little speaker just sound twice as large when I was playing the Baby Driver car chases. That's really impressive. And of course, that's not a room that I'm gonna be really blasting a ton of bass in all the time, but it really is nice to have the option. Maybe I'm homesick one day and I just really wanna have a good experience while lying in bed. It's not that hard to move it over and it sounds great. And really having options is my biggest takeaway from testing out the Sub Mini for a few weeks. It's nice for Sonos fans to finally have a subwoofer that you know isn't insanely expensive and that is easy to move around to their home and just use in all sorts of different setups. It may be called the Sub Mini, but really it's about maximizing sound where it matters. If you dug this video, please be sure to like and subscribe and stay tuned to Engadget.com for more of our audio hardware reviews. We've got a ton of Sonos reviews. Check it out.